Good morning to you. It is Throwback Thursday. You are tuned into the Preterist Power Hour, and this is a ministry provided to you through the Power of Preterism Network, and we do this every Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. It's our privilege to uh, share this hour of power. I'm Mike Miano, pastor of the Blue Point Bible Church, director of the Power of Preterism Network, and it's my privilege to co-host with my brother Edward Howell, who will introduce himself here in a moment and lead us in a word of prayer. And I'm excited for our program as we have Dr. Cindy Coates uh, from The Porch that's going to be joining with us, sharing with us about her new uh, podcast that she's uh, offering up. And I'm excited to learn about that, to learn, as the title of today's program was, The Advancement of Preterist Truths, or as Cindy might refer to it as, Present Truth. And I'm excited to get in on that today. So, Edward, I'll go ahead and hand the time over to you and encourage you to share your thoughts and open us up in a word of prayer. Amen. My name is Edward Howell, and it's always an honor and privilege to call us Pastor Michael Miano. I'm a member of the Blue Point Bible Church and also a board member of the Power of Preterism Network. And now I'd like to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we have to gather together, you know, in your name for this Preterist Power Hour. Uh, thank you for Cindy Coates, Dr. Cindy Coates, that, you know, she's willing to share the manifold wisdom of God as she has come to know it. And I pray that, you know, we have open eyes, ears, and minds to receive that which we have. Bless her and bless Pastor that they may, you know, have clarity of mind and proper focus to give us a uh, a message in, uh, with clarity that we may glean through it, where we can repeat most of it uh, and uh, share in conversation and, and fellowship with one another in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Appreciate Amen. that. Amen. Good hearty prayer there, right? Amen. Yes. Uh, you know, if I may just uh, jump in on some thoughts here before we welcome Dr. Cindy Coates. Uh, it's Throwback Thursday, and Edward, you know, I love to bring up some. Uh, you know, things that were posted or shared throughout the past couple of years. Uh, there's matter of fact, there's some resources that I'll be sharing in our blog update uh, from this program that Dr. Cindy Coates has joined with us uh, here at the Blue Point Bible Church, as I mentioned before, and also the Review and Redeem Conference that we held online in 2020, hosted by the Power of Preterism Network. Uh, I'll make those resources available for you to go back and review some of those things. Four years ago today, I posted on social media, which again, leads us into this conversation of present truth. I wrote this, we can now put on Jesus Christ, or better said, the robes of righteousness that we read about in Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 14, as well as Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. And we can come into covenant with God, which is the, the, the uh, recitation that we see there in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, uh, when there's a new heavens and a new earth, that now, you know, he will be their God and they will be his people. And that's what we celebrate as a present truth, not something we're waiting to be assured about or to be to see, to see or to live in, but rather today living in that reality. And uh, that reminds me of this, this theme of present truth. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to move in on today. So uh, as you see here on the screen, this was our graphic uh, from today. Uh, Dr. Cindy Coates has a podcast entitled Present Truth Matters. And I'm excited to welcome you to the show, Cindy, and uh, to please uh, bring you on and ask you to share a bit uh, that you might think is important to the audience here, and then a bit about your ministries, and then lead us in on a bit of discussion about this podcast and the importance, or for that matter, why it matters. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I am so honored, and it's always so good to see you, Pastor Michael. Um, it's been a while since I've been up your way. Um, mm -hmm. I love Long Island. Oh, my goodness. I have so much fun in New York. New York is like one of my favorite places ever to go. Um, and those who are tuning in are probably asking, oh, my goodness, where are you from, lady? Well, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. OK, so that's why the Southern accent as compared to <laughs> um, Pastor Michael, who's in Long Island. So, you know, the preterist message is spreading all over the country, okay? <laughs> From New York to Florida, all the way to California and all the way up to Alaska, Hawaii and beyond. And I'm so excited about that. Um, 
one of the things that I was led of the Lord to do quite a few years ago now, I don't even remember. I mean, I've spent a while is I started a Facebook group called Preterist Churches hmm. because I knew that so many people felt like they just came in to this amazing truth and they don't have fellowship with other believers on a local level. And I thought, you know what? We need to remedy that. So I thought, well, my husband and I, um, Dr. Stan Coates and I, we have planted seven churches. And um, we thought, well, maybe we could plant some churches on Facebook too, you know? I mean, we could have virtual churches. We could have um, people um, connect with each other and discover, oh my goodness, you live in the same town as I do. Or, oh, you're just like two hours away. Maybe we can meet once a month and, and have some time of worship and prayer. You know, like organically create this amazing um, connection, because we do need that. We need that very, very much, um, because we actually want to share it with other people, and we also want to be able to have um, a flow and a conversation with people where it's not like a constant, what do you mean by that? Oh, um, you know, you don't want that. You don't want this, like, kind of difficult um, uh, connect. Well, you know, you don't want those difficult, awkward conversations with people it's fun to be able to say oh and you know what the lord showed me this in the word oh and so it's like when when we all get together and we're all like completely <laughs> whoa you know you're kidding that's so good you know and it's so 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 good to connect with people who are on a journey for truth and so that that's something that that um you guys that are watching this Take advantage of this group, uh, Preterist Churches, and please do share that with your friends who are also looking for fellowship in, in their local areas. And we want to create, like we've discussed before, Pastor Michael, we've discussed having regional conferences where we'll go around and, and kind of draw people together. Now, uh, on that note, the first weekend of August of every year, we have here in Atlanta, the Perusia weekend mm -hmm. and because that's the year or actually that's the weekend uh where the temple was destroyed it was the it was the first week of august is the is the uh, celebration of herod's temple being destroyed and the temple that we are all members of as lively stones um you know, was actually, you know, came together officially. And so we celebrate that and we do it with funny things because the um, the church spread the grease first. So we got, we have good Greek food that weekend. Hmm. Uh, Greek food is my favorite, you know, and we have delicious Greek food. Uh, we, have, we have even friends who come over from the Greek Orthodox Church <laughs> here in Atlanta who help us celebrate that. And we have a great time. We have great worship and we have amazing speakers who come in who live here locally like Gary DeMar he'll come up and he'll share his part and you know Gary if you're watching you'll think this is funny because um I always say to him and his his friends who come um they're Presbyterian okay so they're a little more reserved than we are <laughs> and I always give them a a, a uh, I give them a, an open uh, invitation to um, be excused during our worship time and go to the pub and have a cigar and a brandy if they want that. <laughs> I say, y'all go ahead. That's not my culture, but if that's your culture, please go and, and do what you need to do, you know, because we like to bring people of different um cultures together They're, that's just what all it is it's not doctrine really it's more about cultures i mean we're more charismatic you know my husband is a three-time grammy uh winner uh and he's a rocker and we have a sort of that that's the kind of worship we do it's off the chain but you might find that offensive 
that might not be your cup of tea. And that's okay if you want to slip out the door and come back when we start our teaching. <laughs> and I mean, it's okay. Nobody's offended. Um, but yeah, so that's a, an event I wanted to make sure that everybody knew about was that Perusia weekend in Atlanta. Let us know. We'll be promoting that, you know, in uh, the months to come. By the, the end of the spring and the beginning of the summer, I like to start making that um, announcement so people can um, plan a road trip, yeah, plan yeah. a road trip. And you know, now with the gas as high as it is, we're going to have to carpool. Hey, you know, you might even want to get a bus load of folks mm -hmm. and come on down to Atlanta and we'll have a good time. It's nice down here in August. Everybody says it's hot Atlanta. Well, it is, it's hot. So you're not going to want to bring a jacket down here in August. I promise you that. And so just wear some light layered clothing, you know, and, and you'll be good. Um, and so I wanted to, um, to talk about that, I guess. Oh, and another uh, Facebook group we have is called Study Matthew 24 Fulfilled. Now, that is a study group that I created in 2013. Guys, it's funny how that was created. I actually did that as therapy for myself because my mother had just passed away in 2012 and I needed something to do with my brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I put my brain in, in creating a uh, uh, Facebook group and I went verse by verse in Matthew 24 and I shared my doctoral thesis with people. And that's what I wrote my doctoral thesis in 2005 on fulfilled eschatology based on Matthew 24 and 25, um, the Olivet Discourse, because Jesus, of course, was speaking in both those chapters. And so they all go together. It's not divided. It's all one conversation on one mountain, you know, on one day to four guys who were two sets of brothers. And it's just really great when you look at it like that. Amen. You know, if I may say something about the Preterist churches, I really appreciate that you put together that group. Last week, we, uh, we, we focused on preterism in the church, and we talked about healthy churches. We directed people, matter of fact, to go ahead and like the uh, Preterist Church's uh, Facebook group there and be a part of the discussion. Share your resources so that we can have a collective, a corporate group of, as you had said, you know, so you can find your cup of tea, uh, you, you know, and, uh, you, you know, in that way you can find your ilk. And we love that, you know, unity and spreading it out. I, I like that you also mentioned, you know, the charismatic, obviously that's a, considered a you know, one of the features of a, a, a variant, if you will, within the uh, preterist community, uh, there's charismatic, there's Presbyterian, there's, you know, reformed, uh, and we welcome th those differences and learn and learn from each other and appreciate, as you rightly pointed out, about uh, gathering with the Greek Orthodox during, you know, Parousia Day. And I, I also appreciate you brought that up because that's something we've highlighted here at the Blue Point Bible Church as well. We've been celebrating that along with you. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't aware that it was something we could travel to. So uh, that's something we'll definitely be uh, reminding folks of and mentioning. So, uh, you know, just yesterday, just to talk briefly about the church, and I imagine you'll appreciate this as well. And I want to ask you to share a bit about the porch. Um, yesterday, I went to event yesterday and the day before I went to local events in my community to learn about drug abuse, suicide and depression and mental health issues in the community. And as I'm sitting there, and this is secular, you know, this wasn't they invited the faith community to be there. Uh, so I'm listening. And I'm saying, we provide all of this through the local church. We have opportunities for you to find wonder. We have opportunities for you to challenge yourself. We have opportunities for you to vent and share and ask for prayer, uh, just to talk. We have studies. That way, if you find yourself, I appreciate that you brought that up and uh, where, you know, the way you dealt with loss was you, you said, you know what, I have to keep my mind busy. I have to challenge myself to go further. Uh, you, you know, you, you were, walked worthy of that. We have people with testimonies in the local church that have dealt with a host of different issues. And I'm sitting there and saying, if only we can get these people to come to the church. Matter of fact, one last point, uh, so it doesn't seem as though I'm venting here, um, would be, uh, you know, during the event, a father, unfortunately, that had lost his son to suicide more recently, he said he got up and he was rather frustrated with the school. And he said, you know, I wish you would have had talks like this, conversations like this years ago. And I'm sitting there and listening, and I agree with him. We need to have them constantly. Uh, however, just today, I looked on my time hop three years ago at the Blue Point Bible Church. We posted cultural conversations. Uh, what was it? Uh, 
I forgot how we labeled it. It was called C3. And we were creating cultural conversations and hosting them on Sunday nights here at the Blue Point Bible Church. That was three years ago. We were doing what this man's berating the school for not doing. We were already doing it. And, you know, so my point, as I, I'm actually working on an article for our local newspaper, to encourage them to see the value of the local church. It's not always about doctrinal agreement and head knowledge, but rather for some, it's this emotional place, this place of encouragement. And uh, I appreciate the Preterist Churches group, not just so that it's a place I could share resources and encourage people, but also, as you rightly pointed out, it's bringing fellowship uh, to uh, these, these amazing truths that we're understanding. Now we're finding fellowship and uniting to learn about conferences and different details. So thank you. Uh, all of that to say thank you and thank you for uh, creating that resource and highlighting uh, some good insight as you opened up a bit. If you don't mind, share with us a bit about the porch and uh, ultimately uh, what you do and how people might be able to uh, glean from your resource in that regard. Okay, well, the porch is a local um, church. We planted it 22 years ago. It's, it was our seventh church that we planted, mm. um, my husband and I. And the, the reason why we planted the church and the porch is a short nickname for our rather large formal name, which is Solomon's Porch Family Worship Center. That's a mouthful. And our kids were young and they couldn't say all that. So we would, they would just call it the porch. And Solomon's porch in Acts 5, 12 is where all the apostles gathered and they were all in one accord. And all were healed in Solomon's porch. And then in um, John chapter 10, 23, Jesus walked in mm -hmm. Solomon's porch. And we've just loved both of those, you know, both of those things. And we want to be where Jesus walks. Mm -hmm. And we want to be where all are healed, you know. And that's emotionally, and that's spiritually, and that's socially, and that's physically. And any way sozo can manifest. Mm -hmm. And sozo meaning salvation, which is to be saved, healed, and delivered. Okay? The full package. Nothing left out of that. And so we wanted to be a place where, where that would occur. And um, when we first started it, I had no intention of being the one teaching every night. Every We meet on Sunday nights. Let me tell you what happened with that. We started our church, and this might help some of you pastors or people thinking about planting a church. We decided, well, we needed space, number one. And when you're a new church plant, it's really hard to find a building on a Sunday morning where you can um, occupy. So we couldn't find any space on Sunday mornings. So what we did is found a hotel that we met in on Sunday nights. And, you know, that was such a wise thing to do because it kept our sons away from parties because they had to go to church on Sunday night, I mean, Saturday night. And we didn't realize how wise that was until later, you know, our sons started getting involved or, or, you know, being asked to go do things. Oh, man, I got church on Saturday night. What are you guys Catholic or something? Is that a mass? <laughs> but no, we weren't Catholic. But we did um, meet on Saturday night, which was really unusual for a non-Catholic. But that's right. what we did for years and years and years. And our, our sons actually grew up in church on Saturday night. We changed all that to Sunday night. When they got older, it just seemed better just because of different reasons. But anyway, we stream um, on Sunday nights on Facebook Live if you're out there and want to connect with it. Um, like I said, I didn't start out because we, we planted that church in 2000. I did not receive my doctoral uh, degree until 2005. But in 2000, my husband is an amazing musician, singer, songwriter, and worship leader. He's also a, um, his background is banking um, and administration. He worked for a huge law firm, um, not as a lawyer, but as a someone who keeps lawyers organized so as you know my husband is a very organized person so he's an administrator and he's very administrative and he's also very gifted in music but he recognized early on 
that my uh, my gifting was teaching. And he said, you need to teach. And I said, well, okay. You know, I taught for years, guys. I have taught every core subject K-5 through 12th grade, and I taught college. I, I have been teaching my entire life. I started teaching when I was 16 years old. I started teaching um, vacation Bible school in the Baptist church. And, and I've been teaching ever since. I've taught youth groups. I've taught ladies groups. But I never have taught mixed groups with adult men hmm. until my husband said, you need to teach. And I said, well, what about what the Bible says about women teaching men? Hmm. He goes, women teach men all the time. I mean, they teach. And I said, well, you know what the Bible says about, you know, women need to stay in their place and, and they can't usurp authority. And he says, who's usurping? I'm telling you, you need to teach. I'm a man. I'm telling you, you need to get up and teach. Okay. And I said, I guess that's not usurping. No. I he goes, look, that's your gift. He goes, it's not my gift. My husband teaches Koine Greek. And, and that's his minor. He, he went to Bible college and he went to seminary. And his major is, uh, is music. His minor is Koine Greek. And he teaches Koine Greek. But most people don't want to sit and listen to somebody teach Koine Greek on Sundays. They just don't. I mean, they might like it for one or two times. But after a while, you know, their eyes are going to glass over. Because he's going to get into declensions and and conjugating and all that. Nobody wants to hear that. You know, they want to come in and know how to put groceries on their table and gas in their tank and get along with their family. You know, that's basically what they want to learn how to do. And they don't want to be scared about the future. They want to learn, you know, that, you know, the, the Bible prophecy has been fulfilled and now we're walking in the kingdom and we're to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. That's what they want to learn. That's what I teach. So, um, that's the porch and you guys can tune in we got people that are actually um members they consider their sel themselves a member of the porch and they don't even live in georgia but they tune in on on sunday nights and they feel connected to us which i think is beautiful and um and you why not you know but if you can be in a local church please do because that's better you want to have people near you and close to you if possible but if not, this is a great um, alternative, I think. So that's Thank the porch. I appreciate you sharing that. We're going to keep that as one of our resources. What we're working on, matter of fact, through the Power of Preterism Network is a resource called Preterist Weekends. And what we're looking, because we only have the Preterist Power Hour Monday through Friday. So we said, what could we provide for the weekend? And we're putting together a resource where it's combining the host of resources that are already out there, Preterist Churches as a Facebook group. Uh, Tony Denton has a group called PretNet where he uh, puts together, you know, networking Preterists in their local community where they might go grab a cup of coffee or organize some thoughts. So you have that. And then I have some running lists of churches of uh, different networks. We have Team Preterist, which is a network of Preterists that have said, we will focus on furthering the, the, the Preterist truth while disagreeing in a host of different areas. So uh, that's one of our other ministries through the Power of Preterism Network, creating that network uh, for others. And uh, so my point being, we're gonna create Preterist Weekends where our goal is to, yes, of course, encourage local worship, but also uh, if there's opportunities like the porch or other opportunities similar, we'd like to keep them there. So people have a one-stop resource uh, to, to, you know, for a Preterist Weekend. And uh, whether it's, you know, I want to plug into a local community that's maybe preterist friendly or a preterist congregation, or uh, I want to uh, go online. So thank you for that. And we'll make sure we include that in the resource. And you said a host of other great things about, uh, you know, about the preterist movement and the preter and church, the importance of church. Uh, but again, we focused on that last week. I want to encourage people to go back to those resources and uh, continue to watch for uh, more in that regard. What I want to get into is you mentioned this teaching gift. And of course, you have this podcast now uh, that you're doing. If you don't mind, I'll let you just kind of outline uh, how you came across this opportunity. What is it in regards to opportunity as others might not be familiar with the charismatic network that you're uh, hosting through? So please share with us a bit and, uh, and ultimately what you're looking to do uh, through that podcast. Awesome. I just so appreciate this. I just want to say this. You know, I so appreciate you allowing... Um, you know, a little space here 
uh, for us to um, share what we do down here. Because, you know, sometimes it does feel as though you need other people, you know, to know where you are and what you're doing. So I really thank you for that. That's a, you have such a hospitable heart. And you know what HOSP is? H-O-S-P. I know you do because you're, you're intelligent like that. <laughs> but some of those uh, who are watching, H-O-S-P, HOSP. Um, it is a Latin prefix. Here I go teaching again. I'm a, here. I, here I go, but it's a Latin prefix, and it means um, well. Okay, we use the word hosp in hospital, hospice, and hospitality, and it actually means healing. Hmm. So when you are uh, hosting things like this, Pastor Michael, you're bringing healing to the body of Christ. Amen. So I, I, I want you to see this as far greater than probably what you've seen before as a, a healing ministry. You have a healing ministry um, in, in lots of ways. I mean, when I was there real quick to brag on Blue Point, I was so, so amazingly inspired by what you were doing with people with alcohol addiction in the community. Y'all had this program for people with alcohol addiction I just thought that was amazing. I mean, I was an alcoholic in 10th grade. Um, I was a teenage alcoholic. You know what drove me to alcoholism? The uh, dispensational futuristic eschatology scared me so badly. Mm -hmm. It drove me to alcohol. Because I grew up in the church and the church scared me. And as a teenager, I thought, oh my goodness, I, I'm surely going to be left behind and be beheaded and God knows what. And so it scared me so bad and made me so anxious. I started drinking. Hmm. And so, I mean, the connection with bad eschatology and teenagers, and that just brings me to this real quick before I talk about the podcast. I have the heart of a mother. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess having the heart of a mother, I have two sons, one was 34, the other's 27. And I've taught young people my entire life. And so having the heart of young people, of children and youth, um, it compels me and it beckons me to move forward because we just have to make sure that they know truth and they walk in peace and hope because that is going to help them determine what to do with their lives and to plan their lives. Um, but anyway, uh, back in 2020, um, when everybody was shut down and locked in and all that, uh, I got all these invitations to be on people's uh, Zooms and their podcasts and things like that. So many, I lost count. I thought, well, I guess this is the way it's going to go for a while. <laughs> so, and people were, you know, saying, oh, people don't have anything to do but sit around and watch the internet, you know, listen to um, their phone. And I said, all right. So I um, was invited by a guy I had never met before, but I actually loved him. He was a Marine and he was from Virginia and he was very amazing. You know, he just reached out to me out of nowhere. And he asked me to talk about Matthew 24 fulfilled. And so I thought, well, I could do that standing on one foot with half my brain tied behind my back. You know, I mean, that is, that's my jam. Let's go. You know, I love it. And so um, we had, had a lot of fun with that. It was so fun. We were laughing because, you know, you just have to have fun with this because it is so liberating anyway. And you can always tell someone's got truth or not, because if they like joy, I doubt they've got the truth because, you know, the truth brings so much joy. I have to sometimes refrain from laughing because it's like people think, what are you so happy about? I go, oh, my gosh, to be set free from from a flawed doctrine is like awesome. But anyway, and so in 2021, a year ago. Because it's March. I mean, it was a year ago in March. I get a phone call from a guy from Charisma, Charisma Podcast Network. Now, it's the same people that publish Charisma Magazine. If you guys have heard of Charisma Magazine, they have built a brand 40 years. They, they have spent a, 40 years building a brand. 
Charisma Magazine. It's based out of uh, Lake Mary, Florida, which is right north of uh, Orlando. And so I get a phone call from them and this young man says to me, hey, um, I wanted to introduce myself to you and uh, ask you, would you be interested in having a podcast channel? I said, what? How do you know who I am? He goes, well, we were listening to, uh, we were looking at our numbers last year, 2020, and um, we get 7 million downloads a week on our channel. By the way, Charisma is the number one Christian podcast network in the world. They're global. They built a brand 40 years, like I said. And he goes, we um, were looking at our numbers last from last year, and we saw that there was a... Uh, show that you were on and we got like it was in the top top five percent of downloads for the year I went what what show was that he goes um it was on uh what he said however he said it but he goes it was October the 6th I go oh my gosh I remember that that's a day after my birthday that was with Jared Lasky yeah, with Jared. Okay, gotcha. The Marine, you know, the guy that I like, he was really great. And um, I said, sure. Okay, I know. Okay. I said, but wait a minute. Did you happen to listen to that podcast? He went, I can't lie. No. I go, I hope you can't lie. My goodness. You know, that expression cracks me up. When young people say that all the time. Oh, I can't lie. I go, what? Well, my generation says, to be honest. Honest, yeah, right. <laughs> it's so funny, right? What are we saying that for? But anyway, um, I'm a boomer, so we had our little cl cl cliche too. But um, the thing is, is that I said, okay, so you didn't listen to it. Well, maybe y'all need to, <laughs> because I'm not sure. I said, why don't you go ask uh, Stephen Strang, who owns it? Go ask Stephen Strang. If it's okay that I'm on your your deal, because I'm not sure if if I'm gonna be a good fit or not, you know, because I'm gonna kind of teach everything y'all against everything y'all teach. Okay, so I mean, it might not be we might have a conflict of interest here, and I don't want to cause trouble, you know. And so he got back to me and said, "No, no, no, you're cool. Come on, you know, we want you to be a part." And I said, "This has got to be a miracle from God, really." Mm -hmm. For that platform, which is very dispensational, very like over the waterfall, if you go to that Charisma Podcast Network and you look at all the podcasters, you're going to see people mm -hmm. that you know teach exactly the opposite of what we teach, a, the, op, the counter opposite. And I look at them and I go, God, only you could put me in the midst of that That's right. because it's like Jesus teaching in a synagogue. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like... <laughs> He's over here. He's over there teaching it against everything they teach. And they invite him in and here he comes. You know, that's what I feel like. Jesus is teaching in a synagogue. Um, but OK, we'll see how long this lasts. But, you know, as long as they, you know, roll out the red carpet, which they have, which I find very. Do y'all know the expression of being slipped a Mickey? Well, that's kind of like what I feel like is going on here. You know, somebody's getting slipped to Mickey. But um, somewhere along the line, God is using his ultimate wisdom and, and favor. Can I tell y'all about favor? Mm -hmm. Listen, it's a, it's a miracle. Maybe it's because I'm a female and nobody sees it coming. You know what I mean? Because they go, surely she's not smart enough to talk about eschatology. She's a woman, for heaven's sakes. And what did they know about anything? Maybe that could be it. I don't know. But I'm going to go along with it. Whatever God wants to do to use it. Surely that woman with a Southern accent doesn't know very much, you know, that would rattle anybody or rock a boat, you know. But I, I do. I, I present, you know, the irrefutable, in my view, fulfilled, eschatology it's irrefutable once you see it you can't unsee it but anyway they invited me on this is the great thing now it wasn't free guys this isn't a free deal it was it was um seven thousand dollars mm. and i thought well okay um they said 
you know, we'll give you a discount if you can come in on the first quarter of the year. Um, and that was 50% off. And I'm going, well, they built a brand. And here's what most people think. Why don't you just go do a podcast and put it out there for free somewhere? I go, well, that's great. But look at the, look at the brand they built. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, I don't have 40 years to build a brand. So if I can come in at $7,000 on a platform that's already built a brand like that and I can have a voice in that platform, I think $7,000 is very, very, very doable. But I didn't have it. Are you kidding me? And so I went out on my group that I have, uh, uh, Matthew 24 Fulfill, and I said, okay, guys, we've got an opportunity here. Um, I'm going to need some help doing this. And so if you guys feel so inclined, you know, to invest, I don't want you to to give money, I want you to invest, okay? Just invest, if you see this as an investment, to reach, because they reach um, 150 nations. When you take this message into 150 nations on a, on a platform that's been built for 40 years, and, and it's like, their ceiling is our floor. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if we can take their ceiling and let that be our floor, and if y'all can see that, and if you can, if you feel like, you know, I want to put some, some of my money, my hard earned money into this, because I see that it's going to be good. I said, guys, I have, uh, like eight hours. Cause this was on March 30th. I said, I've got like eight hours to raise this money for, for us to get the, the 50% off deal. How about that money came in? That money came in. My PayPal blew up. My cash app blew up. My Venmo blew up. I gave them all that. I said, y'all just go ahead and, and, and give what you can. We'll see what God does with it. I had to get on Facebook Live in that group and go, okay, y'all don't have to give anymore. We got it. We got it. We got it, y'all. We got it. You know, you don't have to give anymore. We met the, we met the budget. It was a miracle. It was a miracle how the preterist community came together and said, oh, wow, you know, if God's given her favor, well, let's just go with that. Well, the name of my podcast is Present Truth Matters with Sin Dr. Cindy Coates and friends and friends. So mm -hmm. I can invite my friends on there. How about that? How about all you preterist guys out there who have written books and have your thing going on and you got you can come on and be a be one of my guests be one of my friends see see what god did god allowed me to get on there so you can get on there that's what i think is beautiful because i don't see it about me i see it about us because we are a united front and we are one voice as far as i'm concerned we're, we all worship differently. We all have different cultures. There might be a little this and that that we might disagree on, but no, keeping the main thing, the main thing, th that's what I'm all about. So I find what we can agree on. You might find this funny real quick, uh, Pastor Michael, but I am a Republican that really does uh, lean libertarian. When I say Republican, I mean, whatever that means. Republican, conservative, but when I went and knocked on 5,000 doors in my district, when I ran for state house in Georgia, my district is 75% Democrat. Mm -hmm. And when I would knock on a Democrat door and I knew because I had a vote, a list of voters and I know how they vote. I go there and I have my little list and I'd say, hello, are you, um, whatever their name was, they'd say, yes, I go, well, nice to meet you. I am Dr. Cindy Coates, and I'm a Republican, and you're a Democrat. Let's get that out of the way. Now, what can we do to work together? Mm -hmm. It blew their mind. I go, you and I could sit here and argue on this porch all day long about what we disagree on. What do we agree on? How can we work together? What can we do to help the people in this community together? Let's forget about our uh, political affiliations. 
And they're like going, wow. I go, what matters to you? Do you like to pay high taxes? I don't. No. Oh, let's see if we can stop doing that. Mm. And things like that. Well, the same idea we need to take into the preterist movement. We can disagree on things, politics, you know, worship styles and all that kind of thing. But what do we agree on? Let's find that. Like what you're doing at your church, you know, helping people through emotional trauma and through uh, alcohol addiction and, and through all kinds of things. As a pastor, that's what you do. You help your community, emotional healing and bringing people into a family, showing them they belong someplace. You belong with us. We're your tribe. You know, those kind of things. So important. And that's what we need to do and, and transcend so many things that I, my next podcast, I want you guys to go to Present Truth Matters. That's the name of my podcast. Present Truth Matters on the Charisma Podcast Network. You know what my next podcast drop is called? It's called, uh, I changed it a few times. Give me a minute. I got to remember what the final edit was. Constants and variables. Mm. Constants and variables. If we will focus on the constants, mm -hmm. what's eternal, what's always and forever versus the variables, mm -hmm. the variables. You know what's a variable? A marital status. That's a variable. There, in your lifetime, you will be most likely single, married, and possibly widowed and maybe divorced. Does that change who you are? Mm. That is a variable. A constant is that you are a child of God, you're loved by God, and you are a very valuable part in the kingdom of God, the body of Christ. Mm. That is the, that's the constant. And so I'm gonna be talking about constants and variables in life and constants and variables in scripture. Amen. That's, I'll you said a lot, actually, you know, there's a quote I have from you that I wrote in my notes today uh, that I saw on social media and it, it's paraphrased, but I like the ending part. I like the whole quote, but I'm just gonna read the part I quoted. I am for the kingdom of God. We don't take sides, we take over. And I thought that was a great, uh, a great point there, you know, and that's what we need to be focused on. I think you highlighted that well. And, uh, you know, in regards to the podcast, I believe that, uh, you know, uh, part of my understanding of what you're doing is you're speaking the language that people need to hear this truth through. As we know, there's many different ways we hear truth and being that you're speaking to that charismatic audience, uh, there's, you know, as I like that you don't always post, you know, uh, full preterism. It's more, you know, present truth, because again, that language speaks to people. They understand, oh, I see it, it's talking about the kingdom now it's present and how that truth uh, you know, matters in my life. So, you know, I appreciate that. And I, I, I think that's a big part of the success that God is, is bringing forth is that when you speak to people in ways that they can understand, you know, you benefit them greatly. And you also challenge yourself to, to, you know, under help under them understand and help yourself understand them. So, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate the opportunity you're putting forth in front of people as well as for us. Uh, to see the advancement uh, of truths that many of us hold so very dear. And uh, Edward, please jump in, brother. I was just going to say, I like that part of the quote that, that uh, we don't take sides, we take over. Because uh, Cindy talking about uh, how she's uh, being part of this network of that's already established, you know, that have a lot of things that's opposite of what we're teaching. And being that she's placed in the midst of it, you know, it's good that she could possibly take over because Jesus, had, how he sent his apostles into the world as sheep, you know, amongst wolves and things of this nature, you know, and to go into, you know, the areas that are inundated with idolatry and things of this nature for them to go in and overshadow them with truth. You right. know, so that's what she's doing, which I, you know, I applaud. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. And, and, you know, I, if I may just say on top of that, you have to put yourself in position, uh, you, you know, in order to take over. You, you, you have to be there. So, you know, good point, Edward. Uh, you know, and, and Cindy, thank you. You are doing that. Um, you know, so 
Um, again, you, there were so many great things. I do want to encourage people, if you're on Facebook, you know, you can follow Cindy Coates on Facebook. I'm sure you'll share some details for people to communicate with you here in a moment. Uh, reason being is you often share these things called theology jolts. And I love when you do that, because again, there are some really great details. For example, uh, the last couple of days, we had been highlighting Gog and Magog, obviously a very popular topic right now for a lot of people. Um, you know, those that focus on biblical prophecy, uh, they, they see this as a big deal. Um, we know Bible prophecy fulfilled, uh, probably not as big of a deal for us. However, there's good news that comes in the midst of this. For example, you, you wrote, a, a, I believe it was about 14 or no, about four different details that I noted here. No, there was more. I'm sorry. There was 14, correct? Uh, 14. Yeah, it, was, it was long. It was good. And, uh, you know, I went through it. And obviously what you highlighted there was uh, the Battle of Gog and Magog that we read in Ezekiel 38, 39, mentioned in Revelation chapter 20, verse 8, in a different context, I believe. Uh, but you highlighted that it was fulfilled in Esther. And that's something we had been uh, talking about on our program. You brought up Gary DeMar. Gary DeMar has brought out some great resources in that regard um, that we had encouraged people to look into. So uh, I'll give you a moment to say something about that if you'd like. However, I'm going to share that on social media. People could go ahead. Matter of fact, we're going to write a blog that's going to include this podcast. And on that blog, you'll find those 14 points listed there as well. Uh, because again, it contributes to our conversation that we were having uh, yesterday. So thank you. And uh, if you wanted to share anything uh, to maybe uh, wet somebody's sense in, in regards to what you shared there, uh, I'll go ahead and invite you to. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, I thought it it was it was interesting how Purim is coming up. Mm -hmm. So we've got Purim, which is the feast of Esther, and it's um on I think it's on St. Patrick's Day this year. I think they're one and the same. Um, usually, the feast of Esther or Purim um, are are very close, or oftentimes on St. Patrick's Day, right around there. And I wrote a a novel years ago that I've not published and it's called Esther St. Patrick. And it's about a woman who is, um, who, whose uh, mother is Jewish and her father is Catholic. And it's how she came into uh, the awareness of present truth. Hmm. And how she saw both uh, as, as not what she wanted. She knew there had to be more. She knew there had to be more than going to uh, mass and with her daddy. And she had to know more than going to the temple with her mother. That there had to be more. She was void. And, and, and it's, it's really a little novel where a young girl or a teenage girl could read it and find her way into present truth. And um, it's called Esther St. Patrick because um, I've always thought it was interesting how those two go about the same time of year. And what a beautiful gift to give a little girl or a, a teenage girl uh, in March, you know, the month of March. Um, but anyway, with that, I started thinking about, you know, something to add to that book. And so I thought, wow, okay. I'm going to add this truth to that book. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't publish it yet because this is so huge that in Ezekiel um, 38, where it talks about Ezekiel being a prophet and he sees into the future a hundred years from the time he wrote it of a battle in Persia. Okay. And that battle took place in the book of Esther. And so, as we know, the whole Gog and Magog thing is, is all over social media and Christians posting it as though it were modern day Russia. Mm. No, it's not modern day Russia. It's ancient Babylon. That's what it is. And so um, whenever you see things in context, letting scripture interpret scripture, exegesis instead of eisegesis we don't read into it we don't take current events and read them into the bible because that's what that would be a variable because that's always going to vary 
Mm -hmm. you know, from current event to current event. Oh, wait, you know, how about this one? How about that one? And that causes a tremendous amount of confusion and it weakens the integrity of God's word. And what we want to do is uphold and maintain the integrity of God's word and letting scripture interpret scripture to show that that indeed did take place and it did happen. And I thank God for, um, you know, the Holy Spirit that opens our understanding to let us see things and connect things. And I thank God for Gary DeMar because Gary's doing a beautiful job right now with this. Um, in fact, we have been going back and forth in private messaging, um, sharing about things like, you know, that's going on and um, how, how we got, we have got to hit this thing and we got to blow this whole thing up because it is a huge piece that needs to be put in its proper place. Mm -hmm. And um, with my podcast, President Truth Matters, um, in the logo is puzzle pieces. Mm. I mean, in the, the thumbnail. It's puzzle pieces because each podcast is like a puzzle piece and you got to keep listening to make it make sense. And these are puzzle pieces, what we're talking about right now. And one thing I wanted to say about um, uh, the way we communicate and like you said, using language people understand. Um, I was convicted to use the, the term present truth. Because people go, okay, so if that's present truth, what's past truth? And I go, oh, I'm glad you asked, <laughs> you know, because that opens up a conversation. But, you know, um, we don't, this is important. This is something I learned, guys. I have been trained by Dr. Steve Green for one solid year with charisma. I've been sitting in his seminars for a year, and he's the best of the best. That guy's a marketing genius. And do you know what he has taught me? He has taught me that you have, you don't do a podcast to be understood and you don't write a book to be understood. You do a podcast and you write a book to not be misunderstood. And if we approached our communication skills with that, instead of like, oh, I want to make people know what I'm trying to say. Well, that does, you know, that's not empathetic. We have to bring in empathy when we communicate because what's the point if they don't understand you mm -hmm. or more importantly, make sure they don't misunderstand you. We have to be so direct and so plain spoken and speak in terms that the, and like it's sad, but we have to write on a seventh grade level, mm -hmm. maybe a fifth grade level. We have to write like that. We can't use words that are difficult to understand or um, we can't use like, you know, I mean, forgive me if this offends anyone, but I have taken out the word thus in my writing because nobody says that. They don't say thus, you know, you know, they just don't. And there's like in my editing, I've had to pull out, I have to go about when I write all this, what I, how I write, by the way, is I just write, 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 you know, and then I go back and look at it and I go, that could be misunderstood. And that could be misunderstood. I got to rewrite that so that that's more simple. That mm -hmm. sentence is too long. I use words there people don't use unless they've got a PhD. And who am I trying to reach? Those people? Maybe some of you guys out there Maybe that's what you're called to. You're called to reach people with a PhD and a doctorate degree. And that's fabulous. I don't think I am. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's my audience. You got to know your audience. Right. Know your, my, I don't think my, that's my audience. I think my audience are soccer moms. Mm -hmm. My audience could be soccer moms. My audience could be um, pastors who don't have a, a degree. You know, pastors out there who don't have, you know, they didn't go to Bible college or they, or they went to Bible college and they didn't finish Bible college. So they're feeling like they need more education. You know, mm -hmm. they, they want to be more like, help me understand because I want to teach, I want to teach truth. And I have lots of pastors call, write me like that, lots of them. And they go, I didn't get to go and get a doctorate degree. I started a family. 
I had to have a side job, you know, uh, I had to work on the side and provide for my family. And, and, and I had to pastor at the same time. I cannot tell you how bivocational, how many bivocational pastors out there like that, you know, they had to start a business or get a job on the side to take care of their family sure. and they couldn't, they couldn't finish. So I, I was able, I homeschooled my kids from, a, from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. So I had plenty of time homeschooling to study the Bible because I studied it with my kids all the time. So I had plenty of time to write and study and teach. For 20 years, I did that. 20 years I homeschooled. And so in that, I was able to produce um, material, knowledge and information to share with other people. That's right. It what is. an honor, what a privilege, you know? And, and my husband had a business on the side and he worked like a one-armed paper hanger you know, to provide for us so that I could study and write and do what I'm doing. So I want to give a lot of kudos to my man, Dr. Stan Coates, who made it possible for me to study. One of us had to be out there working, making the money to provide. So, and we didn't look to our church to take care of us because we were uh, pioneers. We were planters. When you pioneer and plant a church, you don't have the money coming in. You know, you have a little bit here and there sporadically and people come and they move out of town and all this. So there's a lot of that, especially in a big city like Atlanta. It's very transient here. Mm -hmm. People come here and go to college and they leave or they come here and they have a job for a while and they get transferred. There's a lot of that here. So you can't look to people who are settled down to take care of your um, you personally. It's, it's really hard. They call Atlanta the graveyard for pastors because unless you're backed by a huge denomination and they have planted you there or put you there and they're, they're taking care of you, most of them, most pastors who are small churches are planning a new work. They don't make it here because it's so transient. We have 20 colleges in Atlanta, 20. So it's all rotating. Guys, it's, it's like, um, yeah, I say all these practical things because many of the people that are watching this or are part of the preterist movement, they might be thinking, wow, I think I want to plant a church. Mm -hmm. I would like to plant a preterist church or, or I want to start a fellowship in my home or I want to, I want to further it too. Y'all are stirring me up. Mm -hmm. I, I want to get out there and, and, and expand this message as well. Well, these are some practical things we're talking about. You're talking about, you know, how to engage in, in meeting the needs of the community. You have a beautiful local church. I mean, he has a building, an old building. When I pulled up, there was snow. It was, whenever I had snowed, there was, it was cold. It was snow on the ground. We pulled up in front of your church. I went, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing place. I mean, God has so um, blessed you with a, with a beautiful facility right there in the most beautiful town, you know, in Long Island, New York. And, and God may be doing the same thing. If I feel right now something in my heart, um, you are an inspiration. So are you, Edward. Thank you. You guys are an inspiration right now. You are showing people that may be interested right and in, in doing what you're doing having a building having a facility reaching a community and then doing this beyond and i just want to say you know those people who are watching and listening later this is so inspiring and and you might have felt isolated and alone but you don't have to feel like that anymore and i just pray that you become more and more inspired but what's going on at Blue Point Bible Church in New York, maybe what's going on here down in Atlanta with um, the porch and, and others, because you can pastor and teach and, and, and create, you can really plan an apostolic work. And I mean, a continuation of the, of the early church, you know, and, and a continuation 
of what we see in the New, Te New Testament, New Covenant, because it's endless. Uh, you know, those are those are good points. I appreciate that you brought that up. Thank you very much for the encouragement in that regard. And I will say uh, it, it is that easy. You know, Edward, Edward, you know, you just started your blog. Edward post posted his first blog yesterday, awesome. thinking through theology at howell.wordpress.com. And, <laughs> you know, uh, again, a long link, but we'll make sure we simplify it for folks and uh, you'll be able to go there and Edward will offer up, you know, one of his giftings. And again, uh, I appreciate, I want to say this, Cindy, I, I thank you for walking worthy of your gifting. And I thank Stan for noticing that and empowering that as your husband. And, uh, you know, I, I know that's an area of prayer, uh, gave me the chills, don't want to uh, make it that type of a program. But again, maybe that's a topic for another time. Uh, you know, that that one body, that one unit working together, building each other up for the glory of God. Praise be to God for that. So, uh, you know, Edward, I, I wanted to mention you and bring you in on our discussion because uh, you, you're doing that. You're walking worthy. You've realized you've been involved and, you know, you've uh, been receptive to my encouragement and my challenge and you've walked worthy. So, uh, if you may, can you lean in on encouraging folks? How easy is it for us? Or again, it's not easy. Let's not call it that. But it's just putting one step in front of the other and, and doing what you feel God is encouraging you to do. Edward, could you speak to that for a moment? Sure. I look at the importance of gathering together, you know, as far as, you know, the importance of uh, encouraging one another, sharing testimony, uh, sharing what we've uh, uh, learned you know, with others, because it's not good, you know, to uh, acquire information and knowledge and not utilize it and not share it with others, you know, that's hoarding and that's being um, uh, omissive. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, uh, and having that foundation uh, and gathering together and just walking, you know, in the uh, steps of God in Jesus Christ, you know, and just letting them guide me from the basics of going to church and seeing um, what I can do, what part can I participate in and, and just, just continue in that. And then God will just open up doors, give you opportunities and take advantage of these things. You know, uh, don't let fear overtake you, uh, challenge yourselves, you know, uh, think out of the box, you know, get out of the boat, you know, uh, things of this nature, uh, and and in doing so, you know, uh, you defeat and you conquer the fears, you know, that's holding you back and restricting right. you because exposure is so uh, necessary in life for growth. You know, you you develop and you learn from different cultures, different peoples, and things of this nature that you would never have the opportunity of doing unless you put yourself out there. That's right. Good word, brother. Amen. And you know. Uh, Let's say it like this. Present truth matters. <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> that's what it is. You know, it really does. And, uh, you know, Cindy, I'm going to bring us to a close here. I wanted to open up for uh, maybe somebody to have some questions. Uh, and Edward, I wanted to give you a moment to say some last thoughts. But before doing that, uh, I just had one quick question for you. Um, and the question is, you mentioned Par Parousia Day and the celebration of that. You mentioned being charismatic and having the excitement of the Lord, if you will. So, and you also brought up Purim. So that being said, I wanted to ask you, maybe challenge you a bit, what would be a fulfilled way of celebrating Purim, being that we're moving closer to it? And you sort of alluded to it already uh, in talking about that book that, you know, I hope, and I'm going to put some prayer to it, that you get it, you know, get that done. Uh, so how could we, being that we're, we're moving close to this season, how could we celebrate a fulfilled Purim? A fulfilled Purim would be that, um, well, first of all, if I may, my mother's family, um, they're Jewish. So I might have a little uh, advantage here with mm -hmm. um, the food end of it. Okay. We always make hamantashen. Hamantashen is like, a. if you just, let me just tell you how to make it. It's real simple. If you get yourself um, some cookie dough and you roll it out into like a little circle, and you put your favorite jam in there, whatever it is, you put some jam in there and you, you come and pinch it up into three corners. It's called hamantashen and it means Haman hats. They're Haman hats. Okay. Mm. And we eat them. We eat them. The kids eat them. They eat hamantashen. So that's always fun to do. 
And then um, Esther, of course, was um, symbolic of uh, preserving the Jewish people of her, uh, of her day, obviously. And in a present truth way of, um, I, would, I would celebrate the victory mm. of the um, Gog and Magog being um, fulfilled. Like we don't have to be afraid of the Even future. He has been overcome. And so, yes, yes, yes. And so, and, and say, so, isn't it great that we can celebrate a victory uh, to, you know, of, of um, the enemies? Mm -hmm. Because listen, um, with, uh, we could get into another whole thing. I'll, I'll try, I'm trying to simplify in my mind. That's why I'm hesitant right now. I'm trying to simplify real quick, make it really quick. But we are, um, we're the new heaven and the new earth. Right. Okay. We are, we are the, the, you know, we are the manifest presence of God now on this earth. We are the body of Christ. Um, we are Israel. Okay. The church, the church is, the church would be um, what you would say, the prince, you know, Israel, the prince. There's so much to this. Um, we would be that. So we will celebrate that the enemy is defeated. The enemy, that which would cause us to be annihilated or to be held back or restrained has absolutely been defeated. And we can celebrate <laughs> that at, with a fulfilled Purim, you know, eating our Hamantash and our Haman hats. And, um, and, and you know, the, if you go to a temple, you'll see the little girls dress up like queens mm -hmm. at Purim. They're, they're all going to have little crowns on walking around and they're dressed up like Esther, you know, that's what they do there. But um, we can all just see ourselves as um, the body of Christ being um, favored. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because Esther had favor. Right. So we could celebrate favor, the favor of the Lord. And if you want to have something to preach on, preach on the favor of God. I And also on my Facebook page, I listed a huge list of favor scriptures. And because um, I'm leaning that way this Sunday as I teach on favor for Purim. Um, I've taught on St. Patrick so many times, you know, and taught on that. Uh, so many times that I thought this year I would do favor because I think people need to know they have favor. We've been favored by God. Favor is charis. The same thing as grace is translated uh, favor in scripture. So, we can, and that's being charismatic, being mm -hmm. charismatic, being ha having grace, having favor. You know, you want to have a Charismatic doesn't mean weird and whacked out and strange. And, you know, it's really had, had a bad uh, branding, you know. We need to rebrand charismatic mm -hmm. as being favored of God and, and having uh, the grace and the, the gifts from God. So the gifts of God, you know, they exceed uh, anything that's uh, strange and bizarre. I mean, come on, you know, being gifted of God means having the fruit. The fruit of the spirit as well you can have gifts with no fruit what does that mean you know we're not we're to be fruitful be mm -hmm. fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion you can't have dominion without being fruitful so the yes. fruit of the spirit leads us into dominion you know so that goes together i don't know I, that's how i would uh, present a present truth purim i think that's an excellent question by the way and very relevant I, go to Amen. Response. Amen. I would like to share what you had said earlier about how, how we have swords, you know, we're not to beat people over the head with it, but we're to utilize the sword in our apologetics and things of this nature. So, and then uh, uh, what Cindy Coates was talking about uh, with Esther, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, we have this sword to defend ourselves. We're in the city of God and we're to invite those that are outside of the city into the city, you know. And, and in doing so, you know, we defend ourselves 
you know, with the word of God, with our apologetics and things of this nature, like in Esther, you know, the, the Jewish people due to Haman's deceit, uh, deceiving the king to make that decree to uh, destroy the Jews and Esther, you know, uh, having, uh, cause he could not recant his, 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 his thing. So Esther had asked him to uh, have the Jews where they can defend themselves. So I'm thinking, you know, we defend ourselves with the word of God, our sword through our, our, our apologetics and they were able to defend themselves in Esther you know, to save their race or their, you know, their people, you know, so that's how I have somewhat equated it. Amen. I love it. <laughs> I'll say this, obviously I could build on that thought quite a bit. Uh, if our enemies have been destroyed, right, we, we know the enemy has been destroyed and therefore our swords, if I may encourage us, because that was something we talked a little bit about, about off air, uh, I will say the reason why Christians have swords is to protect those they're leading into the kingdom of God. That's why you end to protect yourself against the adversary of the mind, the carnal mind. Uh, that's your, your sword, and that's what it's to be used for. Uh, prayerfully, that's an exhortation we might all consider as Christians. And there's also a scripture about having favor as a shield. Amen. Favor is a shield. So you've got your sword and your shield. The favor of God is your shield and the sword of the word of God. That's awesome. I'm telling you, we have a message brewing right there. Swords and swords. <laughs> uh, a good word, Edward. I appreciate that. So uh, yes. if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and move us toward a close. Uh, I do appreciate Terry Cashian weighed in on the comments, said the, over, uh, the overcomers rule the nations with a rod of iron. The word rule is poem, meaning the shepherding the nations, which again, that's our job to be shepherding the nations into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Ken. Terry, for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. Uh, with that said, I'm going to unmute some mics and uh, allow some questions, comments, concerns, encouragement, and uh, then we'll bring our show to a close. And again, we welcome this every day, uh, 11 a.m. We welcome people to be a part of our Zoom session. Uh, if you're in the comments, uh, we encourage you to be a part of the Zoom sessions so that you could ask questions and make comments uh, as we talk about different topics and so on. Again, we don't force anything. So I, I, it appears today everyone uh, feels that you answered the questions and made good thoughts. So uh, I guess that's a, a good thing. Um, Cindy, thank you very much for being a part of our program today. Thank you for walking worthy of your gifting. Thank you for bringing forth that motherly spirit, which again, we know is all too lacking uh, within the preterist movement. So I'm hoping that other women of God that are involved with this movement might step up and say, God is calling me uh, to a work very similar. So uh, that's part of my prayer. And also, if I may say, I'm putting prayer to those pages of that book. So uh, if you feel the Thank Lord you. pressing upon you, know that it's because we've been putting some heavy prayer into that. So Thank, thank you. you. That, that means more to me than you can ever imagine, because it, it's something I do want to bring, especially this time of year in March, I think, oh, doggone it. I didn't get that book out, you know. So that prayer is so it's just that's very, very kind of you. I mean, that really, really is. And I think it's needed. Um, so amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, sister. And again, we'll be tuned into uh, the, the present truth matters. Uh, right now, I believe there's a four minute introduction podcast. I encourage people to go ahead and listen to that. And uh, we'll be sharing that through our resources. And of course, if you visit powerofpreterism.wordpress.com, that is our word, our blog site. Again, you could go to the simplified powerofpreterism.com and that'll bring you ultimately over to the blog site. Uh, and there we're going to post a resource link with Dr. Cindy Coates. Uh, we'll share this podcast as well as some throwback Thursday resources uh, that we have that we would like to share. And if I may just uh, say some closing thoughts in Edward, I'm going to ask you to if you have anything you'd like to share at the closing of the program. Uh, but some closing things I'd just like to bring up, if I may find my notes here. Um, I mentioned the blog. Uh, where also uh, we have John Noe joining the podcast tomorrow. I believe that's very important to mention. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share the graphic on the screen there. Friday, March 11th, we have Dr. John Noe joining us to talk about his ministry, Proffer Prophecy Reformation Institute, pioneering the next reformation of the Christian faith. And of course, Dr. John Noe has uh, written many books and has continued to labor uh, in video ministry, podcasting ministry. So we'll be learning more about that and talking with him tomorrow at 11 a.m. 
And uh, also as a sort of throwback, I just want to bring up, uh, we've talked about covenant creation a couple weeks ago uh, and preterism and, and creation. Uh, we're going to return back to that conversation in a few weeks. And also I am still laboring in getting the uh, covenant creation 2010 uh, links uploaded, as well as uh, getting Tim Martin's sermons uh, for those of you that have asked of us. So uh, again, I thank all of you, Cindy. I thank you for being a part of the program. Edward, I thank you for being my co-host brother. And I want to open up and encourage you to uh, share any thoughts, comments, questions uh, that you might like to share before we close out in a word of prayer. Okay, final, th <clears throat> final thoughts. I would like to thank oh, Dr. Brother. Coates for sharing uh, uh, in the Spreaders Power Hour. And I hope that she would uh, give us another visit <laughs> and sure, share further, you know, and uh, I appreciate it. Uh, and thank you for uh, her time. Amen. Amen. And I want to encourage everyone to visit Thinking Through Theology, edhowell.wordpress.com. Uh, glean from Edward's uh, encouragements there. Uh, of course, right now there's an introduction blog uh, that will lead you to the Power of Preterism Network and the Blue Point Bible Church. So uh, thank you, Edward, for walking worthy of your calling as well. Uh, I think that's a great place to end our, our, our prayers today, praising God for the opportunity to have this time together, uh, highlighting the overcoming power of God's victory uh, and the present truth. And I thank both of you for being a part of this, all of you for being a part of this, uh, those of you that are tuned in here, a part of our Zoom session, those of you that are watching through social media, Thank you, and all praise to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for uh, all that you've given to us. Your word tells us you've given everything to us pertaining to life and godliness. Lord, we know that you are glorified through our possession and our increase, our having dominion in all that we do, Lord. And we ask that you go before us, that you open doors, Lord, that have that we think are closed, that you, you set paths before us that we think are rocky and impossible, Lord, that you open up opportunities, Lord, that go beyond what we think are possible. We know that you are a faithful God. You've given us that victory. We see it through our lives, Lord. We see it through the grace, as we had highlighted before, that you've provided, and we thank you for it, Lord. We ask that you help us walk worthy of our personal callings. We thank you for Dr. Cindy Coates and her labor, Lord, and what you've accomplished through her, what you're going to continue to accomplish through her, and we continue to pray for her family. We pray for Stan. We thank him for being a rock for her, Lord, and continuing to encourage her and walking worthy of her calling, and we ask that you continue to provide blessings to their family. Lord, we offer this up as a sacrifice to you today, Lord. We thank you for your presence in our lives, and we ask that you continue to illuminate it so that we might follow you and see you more fully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Peace. God bless. Thank God you. Bless. Thank you.